True art speaks a universal language that transcends cultural bounds. Look out, Kenyon Drake can fly! It documents history. It loses the kicker! Touchdown, Drake! It predicts the future. This is not the end. This is the beginning. It celebrates. Quarterback draw, Jalen Hurts! Touchdown! Are you kidding me? It mourns. I'd like for the people to remember me as being a, a winner, because I ain't never been nothing but a winner. Jones goes to the end zone. Oh, what a catch! Devontae Smith! It is real. It provokes questions. It shouts answers. And on and on it goes. No matter how accurately or realistically I execute a painting, if it does not communicate something of my heart and soul, then I have failed. Such is art. I hope mine speaks to you. I grew up in Bluff Park, Alabama and uh, was born in Bessemer. Family lived there until I was four or five, five years old. We moved up to Bluff Park. Mom was a art education major at University of Kentucky. She did a good job of encouraging me starting at a young age. She'd give us crayons and finger paints and you know, if not great abstract art, you know, we made great messes. And then my dad was big sports fan. He was pretty good. He's the uh, sports half of me and my mom is the art half of me, so here I am. I was a decent high school football player. They called me Matador more for a reason because it was like to the left, to the right, over the center, under the center. I loved that position, but not good enough to go, you know, not college material. So I had to make the other choice, which was art. Took art throughout college and um, had painting with two professors that would question like, well, if you, if you want to do that, why don't you just go take a photo of it? Well, through painting, you can go beyond photography. You can actually do better than photography. You've got the ability to create within that final thing. And you can use photography a lot in your artwork, but you can go beyond that and put personal empathy and um, interpretation into your paintings. About my junior year at Alabama, they had an exhibit of super realism painters that they would paint shiny bumpers of cars, motorcycles, the chrome on the motorcycles, uh, the glisten, the glean, it was just like unbelievably real. It was like they were laying down a gauntlet. These paintings were before me were like, you know, you can't do this. Or it's like the challenge, like, how do you do that? It ended up being the perfect style and complement to painting football because you have all these neat textures. You have the gleam of the helmets and the face mask and just all the different textures going around, the lights, the color you know, the action and stuff like that. So it was, I think, the perfect thing, perfect medium for me and perfect um, style. Shows a half a yard to go for the touchdown and the possibility of tying or going ahead for Penn State. 19-game win streak, only undefeated team in the country, ranked number one in the nation, Alabama ranked number two. Everything could be hanging on fourth and goal with a half a yard. Goodman. After the uh, 1979 Sugar Bowl, I had seen what was happening in the market with the Sports Illustrated. They had to go back for a second printing because people were wanting that because it was Barry Krause on the cover, you know, with his, you know, back bowed and standing up Mike Gooman. And so I thought, you know, is this 
the stepping stone maybe that the Lord has given me to go into painting full time. So I considered, seriously considered it and prayed about it and said, you know what, I'm gonna do that painting. I knew that I was gonna be representing Coach Bryant's team and my alma mater, the University of Alabama. And if I was gonna do this print and this painting, then it was gonna to have to be up to Alabama standards, Bear Bryant standards. And that this play in the way that I think that I captured it, captured Coach Bryant's, like the quintessential Coach Bryant philosophy of defense wins games and the fourth quarter gut check. I mean, those were the things that this painting was, were gonna represent. So I knew, okay, this has gotta be my best painting ever. So that's really what got me into the Alabama market or the football market, if you want to call it that. A lot of what attracts people is the feeling like, wow, it looks like I could touch, I could you know, reach in and, and touch that person or feel that arm. And a lot of that is created by the style itself. And each painting is like, I'm sort of like a tour guide given the viewer a tour of the painting. Color uh, moves the eye in a painting, and so things like that attract an eye and find something interesting. I guess it draws on, on the human nature of curiosity and what attracts and interests uh, a person in general. You see a beautiful sunset, and you, it's a head turner. You know, it might be the color, it is the color. It's, you know, it's God doing his thing on a much larger canvas. Yeah. Uh, my staff came to me and explained the idea behind the legacy continues saying, hey, it's the 30 year anniversary from the 92 national uh, championship and centennial of football and the Crimson Legacy. And they could say, you, this would be the sequel. And I'm listening, I'm thinking, yeah, seven national championships, that's a lot. I thought about it. Some of the suggestions that they had didn't quite make the final cut, but certainly their input has been, um, been essential to where we are at this stage. For the Crimson Legacy, I created a physical set for it, I guess you could say. I built the two walls in, that were supposedly in Coach Bryant's office. But with this painting and with Photoshop and my commercial design and illustration capabilities, I've actually built a virtual office on, in Photoshop so we were going to do a hybrid painting. The paintings that are in there are going to be digitally printed on the canvas before I paint the canvas so that I don't have to repaint all of my paintings that are in there. And like Crimson Legacy, I know that it's all going to come together to all just, you know, look like my style, you know, painted in my super realism style. Three months have transpired now, and we have the original final art of The Legacy Continues, which is the sequel to Crimson Legacy. national championships. He's won six. Coach Stallings has won one. So I have the photo of Coach Stallings and Coach Saban together on the field. And then I have the seven national championship rings in there. Also symbolic of the seven national championships is the clock. The clock is stopped at seven exactly on the dot. These images here are from four paintings that I did individually of the Heisman Trophy winners and these are like close-ups and so I've stacked them right here 
and the Heisman Trophy itself is actually basically pointing and using him as a pointer to, to the Heisman Trophy winners. I get really close to the painting and uh, yeah, I mean, at some point, this got to, it's got to speak to me and say, hey, I'm done. You know, send me out there, Dad, and, you know, let me do my thing. It's very humbling, like I said before. There's no other word for it to, to know that people care that much and that, that I've reached out and I've touched somebody, given them joy, satisfaction, pride. In a way, you know, I never quit playing football. It's kind of like each painting that I do of Alabama, it's almost like I see myself putting on the cleats and kind of playing for the team because this is one that I can do for the team or of the team or of the coach. And so it kind of feels like I'm still playing and being able to play for the you know greatest football college team in America, right, in the world. Visit alabamacu.com today and feel good about your money.